Hi there guys, question 12, and for the first part we're asked to find the set of values, therefore solve it. Now, this is in a factorised form here, but this isn't equal to zero, so we're going to have to expand this, bring it over to the other side, factorise it, and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so we're going to have x squared minus 5x. Uh, I'm going to bring this 36 over, so we have minus 36, and that we're looking for those values that are greater than zero. Okay, so my first thought is, can I factorize it into a double bracket? Okay, so let's have a look at the factors of 36. I can see 9 times 4, I can make a 5 from, so let's pop those in there, 9 and 4. And how do I make this negative 5? That's going to be minus 9, add 4. Okay, so with all inequalities, we're going to have what I like to call our critical values. We're going to use these, so it's x equals 9 and x equals negative 4. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a very quick sketch. Okay, uh, let's pop some numbers on here. So there's minus 4 and this one is 9. Okay, and I'm just going to label my axes as well. Okay, so where, where it is more than zero. So it's important to note that with any function, when we put it equal to zero, that's where we're finding the, the roots, the, these two points here, which is our critical values. So the y coordinates, if you like, are zero here. So above this line, is when the function is greater than zero, and that's what we want. We want to know where this function of x is greater than zero. So what we've actually got is this part here and this part here, because this part of our quadratic is above the line and therefore meeting this criteria. So our answer is simply x is more than nine and x is less than negative four. Okay, part B. I'm just gonna draw a quick line down there. There we go. So part B, it says using your answer to part A. So that, that normally means it's, a, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You can just use these values here. Okay. And you'll notice that looking at here and here, it's very, very similar. The only th difference is x has changed for y squared. So let me say let x equal y squared. Because if, if they are, if I do that, then they're technically exactly the same question. So if x is equal to y squared, that means, therefore, y squared must be more than 9 and y squared must be less than negative 4. Okay, so to find out why I'm going to square root, and let's start with this one because I can't square root a negative, so I'd actually end up with this, so there's no solutions there. And here, you've got to be really careful here, so it's what values squared are bigger than 9, so therefore y must be bigger than 3, um, because 3 squared is 9, it's got to be more than 9, so 4 squared, blah, blah, blah. Um, and also we have minus 3 squared is 9. So y must have to be less than minus 3. So, for example, minus 4 squared, that's 16, so that works. You've just got to be really careful when there's a squared on an inequality. The signs won't stay the same. Okay, so that's the end.